guys, it's Rosalind back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed on this sensational Sunday. I'm doing blessed and highly favored, and I hope the same for you. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome, namaste, and love and light to you, and many blessings are yet to come. And if you can please do me the honor, is please like and subscribe. Even give me a thumbs up if you feel like I'm res you resonate with my video. And even at the end of the video, can drop me a line. I love positive feedback. And hit that notification bell so you know when I'm about to upload my next video. And if you are a returning sub, as always, thank you for the love and support. And namaste and love and light and many blessings are yet to come for you also. Today, my video is about Twin Flame 101. Happy holidays. Christmas coming. When it was your favorite Christmas memory? Me, my two. I got two. Um, first one is just like seeing my children when they were all young, seeing their their eyes just light up at all the Christmas gifts and all the stuff that they used to get. That you know, that just warmed my heart just to see my children happy for Christmas and stuff like that. I really don't celebrate too much now because, you know, they're all grown. So we really just don't celebrate Christmas like that anymore. And just give praise to God that it was his birthday. Today I'm listening to uh, classical music. It's you know it's just a shocker to y'all because I know I put R&B and you know reggae and you know a relaxing meditation music out you know for certain things. But I love classical music. I love Chopin, uh, Sebastian Bach, and um, Mozart and Beethoven. I love those. It's just I used to play a couple of them couple of keys and stuff when I was little and then I know some people are like what you know about that you know I'm just like yeah I like Chopin and I like Sebastian Bach Sebastian I cannot say Sebastian right today Sebastian Bach and Mozart when I was little you know I used to love playing piano I've been wanting to play piano since I was like four years old and even told my dad about it and um I just you know I played it for like three or four years and then you know things happened so I wasn't able to play anymore so um my, basically, I was just asking, you know, guys, what was your favorite, favorite memory of Christmas? Like mine is when I was five years old. Um, after my children, you know, I was talking about my children and their face lighting up and loving the fact of seeing, you know, happiness on their face when their mom, it's Christmas. You know, they used to wake me up at old dark 30. I'm like, girl, if you don't go back to sleep, you know, just wait for a few hours and we can come up and open presents. And, you know, it wasn't happening that way because, you know, kids get excited. You know, Santa Claus is coming. Santa Claus is coming. And so mine, when I was growing up, um, I knew it was just like a couple of months um, before Christmas. I think it was like October or November and we were um, in Frankfurt, Germany. And um, we got this phone call one day, you know, first time, you know, I've seen my dad. It was like a phone, you know, phone call kept on coming in and he would pick up the phone, say hello and then hang up the phone when he heard somebody. And then my mom ended up answering the phone like on the third ring and third time. And she ended up having this conversation. I talked about this on my, during my first video. And um, the first video I just made. And it was just the best memory of, uh, that I can ever think about. And she was having a discussion with this man. And, you know, I can hear some, you know, him talking really loud in the background. And I don't know what was going on. But, you know, I was being nosy at five years old. I was like, who is she talking to? Why, you know, why are they fussing like that? And, you know, I kept on hearing her say, you know, I'm going to let you talk to her, but, you know, you can't tell her who you are. You can't, t you can't tell her who you are because if you do, I will never speak, you will never be able to speak to her again. You know, it's just let me be able to tell her. And I'm just like, tell her what? <laughs> you know, so next thing you know, I'm putting two and two together. So, you know, I'm playing with my little Barbie dolls and stuff like that. And next thing you know, my mom was like, you know, you got a phone call. I'm like, no, I don't ever call me and say, it's like either my sister and she was, you know, she was overseas too, but she was in different parts of, you know, Europe or whatever. So, um, she was like, you got Uncle Roger on the phone. And I'm like, who the heck is Uncle Roger? You know, it's like, you know, I'm asking 50, 11 questions. Like, who is Uncle Roger? Why am I just down here about now? Why you want to talk to me? My mom was like, girl, if you don't hurt, then get to this dag on phone for this man. He's he calling long distance, he ain't got time. We'll answer questions when you get off the phone. So, you know, I got on the phone with him. And all I know is I got so emotional because I don't know why I got emotional. But all of a sudden, I just started, it was like happy, sad, and excited all at one time. Like, oh my God, oh my God, you know, you know who this was. And he was like, Rosalind. And he's the only one who says my name. Like, he can just, 
combine all letters together. Like, Rosalyn, hey, you know, how you doing? And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm just trying to figure out who this is and why they're calling me. And so, you know, we just sat there talking for a while or whatever. And then he asked me about, you know, different things. But I was getting kind of confusing because it's just the way he was talking to me that you would talk to your dad. But I knew my dad was in the next room because it was like before I got to the phone, you know, he was trying to, you know, my, my doctor dad was trying to stop me from getting to the phone. My mom was like, no, I already told him that he was going to talk to her. And if you pull her away, you know, I'm a curious child. I used to ask a whole lot of questions on why, why this, why that, why that, why you wouldn't let me talk on the phone. So my mom was like, baby, keep on going, you know, go ahead and get on that phone. So we went, in, went into our midst of conversations and then, you know, he was asking about favorite musicians and, you know, if I was doing good in school and we were laughing and, and talking and stuff like that. And I was just like, you know, at first I was just like, you know, I'm sorry, Uncle Roger, you know, I really don't remember you, but I remember your voice. Your voice sounds so familiar and I'm trying to place your face with your voice, but I can't remember your face. And, you know, he was just going in the conversation and he jumped right back and he's like, wait a minute. How, I'm trying to figure out how would you remember my voice? You were, you know, and he had to stop himself. He had to really stop himself because he almost said something. And then, you know, we jumped off of that and he was, you know, it got really, you know, emotional. He was crying and just telling me how much, you know, you never know how much you meant to me. You never know how much you mean to me. Only if I could tell you. And I'm just like confused, but crying at the same time, like, please don't cry. Please don't cry. But then it got to that point where he was just like, so you being a good girl, you getting good grades. I was like, yes, sir. You know, I'm playing ballet, you know, I'm in ballet and, you know, asked him if he'd come to my recital. And he said, no, I'll be touring with Prince at the time. So I won't be able to go. So I was like, oh, you know, if you guys are in Germany, can you please stop by? I would love to see Prince, you know. And, you know, he said I can go to the concert. So I understood why. <laughs> now I understand why. So um, then when we got to the point where... He asked me, you know, um, so what would you want for Christmas? And so I was thinking outlandish stuff like a pony. He was like, no. <laughs> I said, a car, a little car. He was like, no. I said, okay, well, it was this big dollhouse I always wanted that back in the day. We used to, uh, this is really telling my age too. Back in the day when they had J.C. Pittens catalogs, I know you guys probably know if you're up around my age, you remember the J.C. Pittens catalog back in the day where we used to always X on what we wanted <laughs> for Christmas and be like, just, I want this, I want that. But there was this one house I, I've been asking for for the last two years, but it was too expensive for my family to get. And they were like, no, it's too expensive. We can't get that. So I felt kind of bad. And I told them, I said, well, there's this dollhouse that I wanted. It was a life-size dollhouse that I wanted. Um, and my family said it was too expensive, so I couldn't get it. He was like, well, let me see if I can talk to um, Santa and I'll go ahead and see uh, what I can do. I said, are you serious? I said, yeah, but you don't know me. He said, baby, you, you just like my baby. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, keep your grades up and I'm talk to your parents. I'm going to make sure you get it for Christmas. So, you know, make the long story short, you know, Christmas came. And then in the back of my mind, I was like, you know, I wonder if Uncle Roger, you know, it, kept his promise and talked to Santa and see if I'm going to get this dollhouse. So next thing you know, my mom and my, my mom was like, you know, she told my, my dad, my adopted dad, you know, hey, come downstairs and help me get this, and you know, this present upstairs, you know, Santa Claus got for her. And I'm like, you know, help me come, you know, basically she's like, help me come down downstairs. I need you to help me bring something upstairs. So, cause we lived all the way to the top floor. And if you ever lived in Germany in the public housing, you know, in the quarters up there, you know, it's kind of tight in the in the hallway and stuff like that. With the water heaters all on the side. And it just really looked crazy, but it was very beautiful. So that's what took me in that mind aspect to listen to Mozart. Because, you know, I used to hear it all the time going through, you know, the little little towns and stuff that they had. So next thing you know, my mom came up there with this big, huge box where, you know, they had to maneuver it coming in. The, it's like, what is that? And she was just like... Uncle Roger told me to tell you that he kept his promise. And I'm just like, no, no. And I just started bawling because I went to rip it open and everything. And there was this big life-size dollhouse. And you're talking about somebody bawled for like hours and hours and hours. Because I couldn't believe my Uncle Roger actually kept his promise and got me the exact house that I wanted. So, you know, it was it made a very memorable, um, very memorable Christmas for me so um 
and it made me really happy and all that stuff but I ended up my father ended up destroying the dollhouse when we got back to the states and told me it broke but I, that was my favorite favorite memory of my Christmas and if you want to guys I'm not gonna hold you up you know it's a Sunday and I'm very busy today I gotta come stop by and see some of you guys' videos and give me a little shout out and let you know I was there and plus I got so much stuff on my plate today so I'm not trying to hold you up and hopefully you'll drop me a line and let me know what was your favorite most memorable Christmas and I hope everybody has happy holidays and keep each other in each other's good spirits and prayers and please like and subscribe even hit that notification button so i will talk to you later and even drop a line give me a thumbs up and i will talk to you peace and be wild <laughs>